The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now on a Sabbath day, Jesus had gone for a meal to the house of one of the leading Pharisees, and they watched him closely. He then told the guests a parable, because he had noticed how they pick the places of honor. He said this, When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take your seat in the place of honor. A more distinguished person than you may have been invited. And the person who invited you both may come and say, Give up your place to this man. And then, to your embarrassment, you would have, you would have to go and take the lowest place. No. When you are a guest, make your way to the lowest place and sit there, so that when your host comes, he may say, my friend, move up higher. In that way, everyone with you at the table will see you on it. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the man who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was reflecting today's uh, readings, all these readings, the first reading, the responsible psalm, the gospel, it all connected to our beloved Arch, to our beloved Cardinal uh, Soter Fernandez. The gospel this morning. Jesus tells us, the man who humbles himself will be exalted. Cardinal Sauter is a humble man. Yesterday during the Mass at St. John's Cathedral, Archbishop Julian invited each priest to share about this man, this man of God, how he would have touched you. And I remember sharing that there are many stories that I can share about Cardinal Sauter Fernandez. But the more vivid that I can remember especially when I was praying yesterday evening before his coffin, I remember this, uh, uh, his humility. Each time when he comes for clergy recollection every month, he comes with Father Amala Nadan. Now, Father Amala Nadan is also not well. He's in the wheel bound. And... Uh, he pushes him uh, to the uh, place where we have our meals. A cardinal pushes uh, a fellow brother priest. And not just that. After the meeting, after the recollection, we gather for lunch. And being Father Amala Nadan who needed help, which he can't help himself, I've seen many times Cardinal will wheel his chair, the, the wheelchair, to the washroom. And there he will, you know, help on this priest in all its simplicity and humility. That really uh, touched me when, each time when I uh, go for the uh, 
clergy recollection. And very hardly he asks any priest to help. He feels that he has a responsibility, a caring for this fellow priest. Uh, when we are busy having our meals, and here is a man who takes uh, a fellow priest to the washroom, and not easy, especially when you are in the, in the wheelchair, yeah? to lift up and all that. It's not easy. And that is uh, what Jesus is telling. The man who humbles himself will be exalted. There are so many stories that I can uh, talk about. Cardinal uh, Sota uh, being a family friend. And yesterday, one of the sharing that was given, uh, when he was given the, uh, the honor of being a cardinal, when he has to go to Rome, uh, and you know, when you become a cardinal, you get a special kind of uh, dress, uh, rate. They call cardinals as prince of the church, prince of church. And I was hearing this uh, sharing, and uh, he did not want to take back the new, uh, you know, attire that he received as a cardinal. He wanted to leave it in Rome itself and in the little sisters of the poor in Rome, in Rome. And then uh, there was a fellow priest who went with cardinal uh, together with Archbishop Julian and that that priest brought it back for him and that he did not want to bring back uh, uh, his, you know, that kind of uh, dress or attire where Cardinal West. He, he felt very uneasy with all this. Very uneasy. That is what Cardinal Sorte is all about. A man of humility. He's also a man of prayer. Uh, when I come for the clergy recollection, on Wednesday morning, before anybody else, I see him in the chapel, praying. I don't know what time he gets up, and he prays. And I'm sure, and I'm sure, that even as he has been going on in his life, as a priest, as a bishop, as Archbishop, and then as Cardinal, I'm sure he would have had this in his mind, when can I enter and see the face of God? When can I enter and see the face of God? I'm sure today he is seeing the face of God. Uh, that uh, words from the book of Psalm has come real to his life now. When can I enter and see the face of God? There's a kind of a desire to see the face of God, to be one with God, to be in union with God. Like what St. Paul tells us in today's uh, first reading, there's a kind of a dilemma that Paul experienced. I want to be gone and be with Christ, which would be very much the better. And then to stay alive in this body a little while so that Paul or St. Paul can continue in his work of evangelization. Or 
all these uh, readings somehow uh, speaks about uh, Cardinal uh, Anthony Sota Fernandez. Few years back, he wanted to go and uh, visit his uh, father's uh, grave in Sungai Petani. And he asked for my help because he knows me very well. So we took a trip to Sungai Petani, not knowing that the father's grave is not in the Catholic uh, cemetery, but is somewhere else actually. It's in an estate called the Scarborough Estate. And to go and to get into the Scarborough Estate, you need to get another person to help to pass through uh, because it is a uh, oil palm plantation. And of course, there was a gentleman, a very good man, the late uh, Mr. Madalamutu, the former catechies of Christ the King Parish. So he took us, the three of us, we went to pay respect to his father's uh, grave. Just about six, seven uh, graves only there, all mixed with few Christians. And beside that, there were also some Hindus. And he wanted to, you know, to do up the grave for his father because his father passed away when he was a young boy, when Cardinal was a very young boy, young, uh, I think it's about 10 years old. And as we were coming back, and the, uh, the car that I drove broke down, broke down in Butterworth. Uh, so we had to take a train to back to KL. And in the train, uh, he was talking to everybody as though everybody knows him and he knows everyone. I'm just wondering, huh? This, this man has nothing else to do over it. Uh, any Malay woman or Malay man or whoever it is, he talks to them. Very, uh, uh, there's no kind of any, uh, what do you call, uh, barriers or what. Uh, talks in their language, talks in a very simple way, uh, asking them where they're from, uh, which I normally, I don't do that. I don't talk to strangers. Uh, I mind my own business. Uh, but here, this man, talking from Badwood right up to almost to, uh, when we are about to somewhere in Rawang, then when he stopped the conversation. Uh, so, this is what Cardinal Sorte is all about. It's not about the position, it's not about the title, it's nothing but a man of profound humility. And I'm so glad that I was ordained by him, actually, in 1997, in this parish. Uh, I'm so glad. One day before his death, that is on Monday, I visited him in the uh, Little Scissors of the Poor. After hearing that he's going down, and of course he's unconscious, uh, but there's movement, and uh, I just told him, Cardinal, thank you very much for ordaining me, and do please pray for me. And uh, I took his hand and put it on my head, um, because that's the hand that also uh, that laid on my head during my ordination. So this is a very uh, simple uh, a humble man, Cardinal Sota Anthony Fernandez. And of course the whole entire church will, uh, will miss him very much, uh, being a humble man, a prayerful man. So in today's uh, Mass, we thank uh, Cardinal Anthony Sota Fernandez uh, for his great love for the church. Yeah. We said all the things that we can say about him, that he has a very great love 
for the church. The church may not be the perfect, but he has so much love for the church. And today we honor him and we give him thanks for this man who has paved the way, uh, not just uh, in our own personal lives, but even when it comes to the renewal of the church, of our local church, the renewal of the local church. So I'm sure now that he's very happy to be one with God. I'm sure that he has received his eternal reward for all the hard work, great sacrifices he made during his life, not just as a priest, but as an ordinary Christian. And uh, he always had this great desire to go for Mass every day. And the Cardinal, uh, he was an hospital assistant, H.A., uh, and had this strong desire to go for Mass every day in spite of his work and commitment. And he carried out that actually, uh, every day going for Mass. And that has made him a very faithful disciple of Jesus. So let us thank God for Cardinal Anthony Sotter Fernandez, though we were not able to go for the funeral, even the clergy, it's all limited. So, in a sense that we are celebrating this morning Mass in thanking God for this man. So let us take some lessons from him and try to put it into our own life and live the life that God wants us to live. So we pray for this.